all I remember is drinking pints, pints of port and lemonade. Oh no! no that's, that's a throw up material. That. Yeah, I, I don't know that's how a recipe it. for disaster. That's exactly yeah. what that. Port is. is lethal. Right, I'm in. I'm in. I'm good. Cool. Let's go. Hi, I'm Chloe Mogg. I'm a singer, songwriter, music journalist, and PR from the UK, and welcome to Dermis Mondays. Woo! 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 So fancy. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Dermis Mondays. I'm Ali. I'm Craig. And this week we're going to get some chat with somebody who's, who's been helping us out with a bit of PR, Chloe Mogg. So, I'm yeah, I'm a music journalist and PR from the West Midlands in the UK, and I've been doing PR for about six months now. I've been doing journalism for about four years and I've been writing music for about, well, since I was about 14 and that's what, 10 years ago now. <laughs> yeah, and you play as well, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. so I play guitar and I play bass guitar as well. The best guitar. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what made you get into the PR side of things then, Chloe? So I've always liked um, I've re- really liked English at school and writing poems and lyrics and all that jazz. And um, I used to study journalism at school and used to just love reviewing things just for, just for the hell of it, really. And it kind of just rolled from there. I mean, um, I started my own blog, Mog Blog, in 2017 because I was literally bored of college and wanted to just do something. And I started out by um, reviewing like films. I think I've got somewhere on my blog a, a, a film review of The Grinch, like just because I was bored one day. It's like ridiculous, but um, it's um, really good now. And I'm working hard on my blog and other sites as well. I work for quite a lot of publications across the, uh, the web. So yeah, it's good that it's been great having people like yourselves picking up on some reviews of the singles and the album now that it's coming out. So it makes a really big difference. We. For yeah, sure, yeah. We, we, we can't do it without people like yourself that are constantly reviewing new music. There's so much of it out these days. We're I just know, talking yeah. about that. You know, there's releases all the time. It's quite hard to stand out, but definitely having people in doing PR and doing a small review and getting in touch and, and doing things like this, which is cool. Yeah, exactly. I think as well, with, with the whole pandemic and stuff, you need to help whoever you can help at the moment. Like, we're all in the, the same horrible yes. boat. And level playing field out there at the minute then I'm, I'm, ha- I'm happy so i was actually saying to ali i was watching this uh, interview with bob dylan and uh it's yeah. t- time magazine that's interviewing him in the 60s and he's basically like i don't need time magazine you know and he's just like totally <laughs> slating the guy and he's like you know uh awkward why him, yeah why, why ask me about politics you know I'm, I'm just an entertainer i'm not a politician and all these sorts of things but it just it, it made me think like we're on the total end of the, the spectrum but it's like we're, we're just <laughs> trying to make a noise just to get people to notice us you know and it's like it's it's interesting how times have changed isn't it i know yeah i mean like i said with the whole pandemic it's kind of like um well, i don't know if you guys were doing it but when the when first lockdown hit i was live streaming like every saturday night just to fill the, the gig void yeah, so, I was missing yeah. the gig so much and then you know that novelty wears off and I'm, you know it's, i'm not going to say it's the same as gigs because obviously it's not but it did fill that hole slightly which is great but um yeah it's it's been a weird time hasn't it let's, let's face it <laughs> yeah that wore off super fast didn't it i think within three or four months it was like everybody was gearing themselves to getting set up at home and doing podcasts and doing videos and you know we, we were talking about doing video documentary style projects before lockdown anyway and yeah. it just kind of opened the door to to start in Dermist Mondays but it would have been more about like the, the practicalities of like going to a show and filming behind the scenes footage and being in the studio or recording at home doing videos you know that sort of thing but we've just had to make do with I don't want to say it could be worse but, but the internet has definitely helped me along the way <laughs> yeah I think as well when you see like I've seen quite a few big time artists live streaming from their phone and you're no, like yeah. the standard really is a level playing field at the moment if if people that have got a big budget behind them yeah. can live stream from their phone then you know anyone can actually i think i did used to watch um Catherine jenkins at christmas time and she was doing all these like 
uh, live streams via her phone and it's just crazy to think of you can have all the money in the world but still live stream on your phone <laughs> it was funny watching jamie oliver's cooking program from in his house it just yeah. looked so fed up and defeated <laughs> you know when he's like ah oh, yeah you put a little bit of this and that and blah 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 and these kids are running in and he's like come on kids go get, get the house but he's, you can see the bags under his eyes you know but he's like you can tell he's he's not had any sleep and could probably be done without this yeah, you can, <laughs> yeah, could probably see that on me and you now Ali as well yeah I'm like oh. <laughs> and me oh. what inspired you to create an album like because a lot of bands nowadays would just do like an EP or you know re keep releasing singles or whatever but what just inspired you to just get an album out there yeah that's actually a really good question because we, we, we talked about this a lot before yeah, it was a big um, decision. We were quite dead against having a, a strategy at the beginning of the project, at the beginning of the band. We thought we'll just, we'll actually just put stuff out when it's ready, when a song's done, we'll release it, when a video's done, we'll release it. But I think after maybe, what was it, about two or three months in yeah. to recording, we changed our decision to actually put releases on hold. And it's definitely a conscious decision to put some singles out before the album in, in quite a short period of time. And yeah. I think we, we're both quite big album fans anyway. Same. So we'd never wanted to lose that element. I think that... Yeah, we, we like, toyed with the idea of just putting out singles until something magically happens and we're just all of a sudden a viral massive thing but you're just living in fantasy land we, we quickly realised that the best thing to do for us was to do what we wanted to do which yeah, was okay. make an album <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like it's like why why not just take it into your own hands and just do what it is you want to do and at the end of the day you know it, it might not go on to have millions of listeners but I, I'm convinced that if you put the level of effort that we put into this album most of the things we do to be honest people are going to go back when the next album comes out you know the people that that catch on to the next one and enjoy it hopefully will go back and you know check out the other one and be you know enjoy that as its own yeah. thing as well. If you guys are huge album fans then what would you say is your favourite all time album? It's a silly mm. question, that. Did <laughs> mm. I say mine first? Yeah, you say yours. Yeah, it gives us some time. Mine is Grace by Jeff Buckley. That's just the album of my life. <laughs> and then probably I really like um, oh, do we top get, three. Do we, oh, do we get to do top three as well then now? Yeah, yeah do I'll, top, I'll three. Cool. top three. Right, so it'll be Jeff Buckley, uh, Grace, and then Chris Cornell, Euphoria Morning, and then maybe I think Pink Floyd Animals because that album was my childhood <laughs> I love Animals I love Animals great album I'm not going to put too much thought into it and just say that this is my favourite three albums that are coming to mind right now I would maybe say a bit of a bold one because I don't really talk about it much but uh, London Calling by The Clash it's an album okay. I've, I've always listened to like through the years Prince Around the World in a Day when I got my first car, the CD player wouldn't eject and I put that CD in and I had to listen to it for about a year till I managed <laughs> to get the CD out and I loved it. Didn't like it when I first put it in. And number three, um, I'll go for something totally random, Station to Station by Bowie, nice. which is this kind of coke era where he doesn't remember recording it. <laughs> apparently lived on a diet of uh, a red pepper and a glass of milk a day. Uh, one of the albums I keep going back to is uh, Yield by Pearl Jam. Oh yeah, okay. Um, like I was I'm a, a big... grunge girl so I love that. <laughs> I kind of grew up in 90s and early noughties grunge bands and it's, it's maybe not something that I listen to at the you know currently, but it's always you always reference it. You're always yeah, like, it's always a reference. That, yeah, I you're always like, that, that reminds album. me of that bit um, from that Pearl Jam song. And yeah, you try to remember <laughs> the album, and then you're like, oh yeah, it's that album. It's evolution, baby. Da, 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 da. Love that song. Destroy rock and roll by Milo. Yeah, it's a good. It's a is a is a kind of one that comes to mind. Um, a third one. I'm gonna go Prince, and I'm gonna go Purple Rain. Yep. Can't go wrong with that. Because that's just amazing. Yeah. It's funny because like doing the PR campaign, we've referenced a lot of bands, and 
you know, some of my like I, I love uh, Alison Goldfrapp. I love, just like she's amazing. Um, the the style, the the visuals, the the way she puts music across, the the music itself is is amazing. And mm. a big LCD sound system fan as well. So grown up, definitely grunge. As I've got a wee bit older, definitely a lot more synth electronic yeah. tunes. So funny because probably Milo, the destroy rock, re- destroy wreck and roll, destroy wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Milo Destroy rock and roll album is almost like a kind of a vessel from the, my grunge days into my electronic yeah. Yeah, sound, yeah. so that's quite cool. It's a kind of album you put on and like if there's someone there that's, that doesn't know what you're listening to, they'll know every song that's on it. That's true. Because it's been in so many adverts and yeah. stuff like that. And... Yeah. Would you say, um, this is off top, this is more about the, your songwriting, but do you guys write lyrics or the music first? Because so many people I speak to are music first, whereas I write lyrics first. So it's, mm. you know, everyone's different. So what do you guys do? And do you write together or separately? Um, I would say we write every song differently. And I, 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 we kind of make a point of trying to write them all in a different way. So yeah. um, some songs, um, the, the general theme amongst all the songs, and it's a rule that we come up with, is if you don't remember it by heart, then it yeah. shouldn't be a song. So like, yeah. we'll like let a song live with us for a long time before we like decide on anything. And that's why we're so slow at coming up with stuff. But it means when you do come up with something, you never <laughs> forget it. You know? Yeah, that's... that's- pretty good yeah and um, i think because of lockdown we've not really had a chance to write together so i've been in bands in the past and i've i've, I've written a lot of material for previous bands that i've been in but dare, dare Mist, this album is mainly lyrical content from craig and where we can we've maybe shaped a few lyrics here and there uh, with a little bit of help from me but that's something we're looking forward to in the future once we're able to work together closer, I think writing a song together. Mm-hmm. Don't know if I fancy doing that over Zoom. No, it's, there's. I've been um, because I'm recording my album at the moment. <laughs> I'm recording, yeah, I'm recording my album, and there's only so much, you know, produ- production that you can do over Zoom with your producer. I'm yeah. like, it's reconnecting again. Oh, drives me insane. <laughs> so, what, what's the sound of the album going to be then? Is it going to be? I don't like. Um, being fully limited to, to one avenue. I've always been quite like, my ma- like I just mentioned, my main influences are Jeff Buckley and Chris Cornell, but like, I love stuff like Frank Zappa and really weird yes, stuff yes. as well. Yes, yes, no, uh, good album. <laughs> and I'm very much like, I, I, my, my main goal is just never be limited to one rule book and just do what makes me happy basically. And um, we've recorded four tracks so far for the album. And there's three already out. One's kind of like trip hop electronic. The second one is still kind of got like a 07 trip hop vibe to it. Um, and then the recent one I've just released is very uh, alternative rock, Jeff Buckley, Radiohead kind of vibe. And then the fourth one, which mm. we haven't released yet, is <laughs> I, I said to him, um, some people that it sounded a bit like Soundgarden met up with my bloody Valentine and just created this pile of mess. <laughs> but um, so it's like shoegazy grunge. It's, it's a bit weird. <laughs> I am looking forward to hearing this. Did we get a sneak preview? I'm sure you can at, at some yes. stage, but it's good, not good, quite good, ready good. yet. <laughs> uh, the trip hop, like you say that, it's, it's actually a really good genre trip hop because it's Amazing. aged. It's aged well. Like a lot of dance. Yeah style music hasn't aged well but trip hop when you go back to it like the vast majority of it as a as a genre it, it yeah. sounds good you know trip hop's uh, mainly been a main influence um because of playing bass i've always like liked stuff that's got a really cool groove to it and i don't know i just really i, I fell in love with trip hop at college and it's like yeah this is really really cool uh, it's like you know massive attack and stuff like that but zero seven i've up there with like my favorite bands ever <laughs> favorite duos ever and um yeah they're what they're like, kind of like acid jazz trip hop i just look i just think it's just aged so well and it also like it's crazy to think that sia was in zero seven like that still blows my mind 
quite a big Massive Attack fan as well. I've never got a chance to see them live, but I've heard they are like incredible. something else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely incredible. My um, um, my friends saw them live with um, Elizabeth Fraser singing Teardrop, and he was like, it just my whole life just paused, and I was just yeah zoned in. And, um, I'm so jealous. <laughs> so I love those wee moments where you know you're part of something that's affected you so much that you'll remember it for the rest of your life and yeah um, yeah i don't know if you've ever heard of a, a band from bristol the yeah. nordic giants they're kind of an instrumental band but they, they're a two-piece drums and keys and the keyboard player plays some trumpet as well which is meant it was a drummer that plays a <laughs> trumpet man get it right was it the drummer or was yeah. it i thought it was did they not both play? I'm sure the keyboard player plays as no, well. No, I, I always remember that. It was a drummer playing the trumpet. I was like, that's just, just showing off now. <laughs> it, it's incredible. They, they dress up in, in like, um, sort of Last of the Mohicans, like feathered headdresses and things and body paint. And, um, it sounds amazing. It, it is. It is amazing. It is yeah, amazing. It's, it's, um, one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> but they, they have a, um, they have a projected they have projected films in the background so they're okay. side of stage and then they've got a big projection in the, the center and it's like really high quality movie produced clips and they yeah. they compose the music to go along with the video that sounds amazing. so you're you're watching i think one of the videos is about a family that are on vacation and they, they run go out of by, oxygen they go down by a lake and they run yeah. out of oxygen yeah and they end up having this fight over these oxygen tanks and it's just it goes from this really happy sounding musical piece to a really frantic high energy race to the <laughs> it's like who's who's the last to survive you know it's really really yeah. really uh, hard hitting but their stuff is like it's mi like really mind-blowing when you see them live and i remember it was King, King Tut's, and it was thumping. The sound was huge, and what just watching the visuals as well. I remember just thinking, this is life changing. Like this is the best thing I think I've ever ever seen. Made you think about yourself. I've got to shape up, man. <laughs> I miss I miss being able to go to to places <laughs> and to, to experience stuff like that. We're so excited about being able to perform this album live. And we don't know when that's going to be, but we got a wee flavour of what the live sound will be like. We've, we've filmed some studio live sessions with Jamie, who's a drummer in a Glasgow band called Bad Mannequins. They're really another amazing two-piece band. And Ross, who's the singer in Bad Mannequins, he used to play bass with Texas and he does a lot of production work and we've worked oh, with him nice. in the past on some demos. It was nice just to get in and play, you know, albeit socially distant and not yeah. able to hug each other and things like that. Uh, the, the stuff we've put together sounds really good so we'll, we'll have some live studio recordings to come out very soon. They're actually going to be part of a an online Glasgow festival in March so yeah. Queen Margaret Drive Spring Fling 22nd to the 28th of March. That's it. You know hey, more my, than us. My friend <laughs> my, my friend Rosie Bands, um, I think she's from Glasgow actually. How but, are you going to yeah. navigate the the current climate then um, in terms of playing live? Are you going to put a band together or are you going to do studio style stuff or are you just going to live stream it? I, I do have a band already. Um, I've right. got a trio. Um, so I play guitar and bass and obviously sing. Um, my boyfriend plays guitar and bass and sings as well. And then I've got a drummer called Jack Bowles who's awesome. Um, but we're hoping to branch out and get a cello player. Um, All right. Ooh. Like Queen Bandit? That we've yeah, never seen yeah. them kind of style. Yeah. That, that's, that's the goal. Um, I, I mean, you know, I'm not really planning a gig or a, t a tour until I've, my main focus is to just record at the moment. But um, yeah, hopefully next year we'll probably do like a full tour and stuff like that. But Yes, Glasgow. Yeah. yeah. Glasgow, here we come. We could do, yeah. a, we could do a swap. <laughs> We'll come I've to London. Yeah, we'll that come sounds down good. south. That a swabby, swabby. I, I, I've never actually been to Scotland before. Ah, oh, Chloe, you'll fall in love. You won't want to leave. <laughs> before you go over the bridge to the sky, there's a wee place called Plockton. And they have coral beaches, greeny blue seas, palm trees. Yep. And Ow. like, yeah, it's amazing. And then you can take um, boat trips out and you can basically see right down the water onto the the, the, the seabeds and yeah that's the fantasy but the reality the, seals. the reality of it is that 
you get soaked <laughs> <laughs> and it's cloudy and these places have their own microclimate um, <laughs> last year uh, I mean Nicole we, we decided we would uh, go to the Isle of Barra so we just we just googled <laughs> like whitewash. best places to go you know on it, it was like one of these articles it's like go to the Isle of Barra for wild camping right so we we got the ferry from Oban and it was like a three hour train journey from Glasgow to Oban and it was stunning it was amazing it's a beautiful yeah. day and then we get on the ferry at Oban to Barra five and a half hour ferry get to Barra absolutely chucking it down oh, no. <laughs> but we were determined that we were going to wild camp this on the beach so oh, oh. it was like a five mile walk to the beach and uh, as we were walking there was like people driving past and then like because it's one track roads they would turn around and come back and be like where are you going we'll give you a lift because obviously it's so like small community in the yeah. in the islands everybody knows everybody yeah and, and yeah. we were like standing. this is a local island for local people yeah <laughs> totally soaked through and uh the woman was like oh you just get in just get in it's fine i'll, I'll run you and we're like we're going to the beach and she's like the beach and we're like yeah and she's like i'll give you a lift and we're like no we'll just walk just enjoying the walk she just was like oh my god so then she had to like drive another mile so she could turn around and go back to where she was going <laughs> but you know that way when it's like imagine if there's no petrol we would have just destroyed our car though you know we had to, like <laughs> our, our bags and our tents and all that so <laughs> our, our tent so we get we get to the beach and uh it was like <laughs> try to get this tent up as quick as we could get in sleeping bags soaked through oh, <laughs> just i remember you coming home from that trip away and you just oh, be like miserable we had to walk Best back and walk, uh, we had to walk back don't get me wrong right it was stunning it was totally <laughs> stunning and the, the beach had the see-through water and all that and it was it was amazing um yeah. but it was brutal it was so brutal like I had oh. one of those wee gas hobs you get, um, oh, yeah. like the canister and the wee thing, you you light it. Mm. I was just sitting with that and a bar of chocolate, just like <laughs> trying to get some heat in me inside the tent, you know. That sadly is the reality of this Aye. holiday in Scotland. It is. <laughs> we, we walk back the following morning, right, gets to the ferry port and uh, there was these when we were going because there's the Hebridean Way, it's a big uh, walking stroke cycling event and uh, mm. there was these Germans, we could hear them on the train on the way there and uh, they were at the ferry port in the morning as well, they must have been absolutely gutted, <laughs> they'd brought their like carbon fibre bikes all the way from Germany you know and they were must have been really looking forward to doing this big trip and just got totally washed out like us so we're not That's selling Scotland. it very well, Craig. Yeah. I was Supposed just going to gonna say that. You guys aren't selling it well to me. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. If the, it, uh, unforgettable. The, the, That's, That's a good It's unforgettable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. unforgettable is good. Um, it, it's the icing on the cake when you get good weather. You know, it's, it's oh, incredible. Yeah. And dri sure. Driving through Glencoe and up the west coast of Scotland, it's it's, it's, it's maybe not quite New Zealand, but it's, it's, a, it's pretty close. There's loads of wee venues up there as well. There's venues in Sky and up in Inverness and you do, on the islands as well. There's there's, there's lots of places that uh, are always looking for bands to come and play. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take anything at the minute. I just don't want to be in my room anymore. <laughs> this this is this is I don't want to say normal because what is that? But <laughs> you know, I've learned to to live like this, and we all have now. It's it's something that you know. We we ha we ha we can do, but I'm optimistic that good times are coming. I think they'll be this year. I, I, I hope anyway. Yeah, I think they will be. And even if even if the summer doesn't go ahead for festivals and holidays and things, it's it'll come in October, November, December. The winter events will all start happening. And yeah, November's quite. I quite like November for the kind of gig season. There seems to be quite a lot of good stuff happening that time of year. And, of course, nobody will be able to get booked in to play anywhere because all the gigs will be <laughs> rescheduled, you know. So no, that's yeah, the other. That, that'll, that'll be a, it'll be a backlog. It's, we mm. might need to wait till twenty twenty two to be able to book a venue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there'll be people having weddings at King Tuts and Nice and Sleazies and stuff like that because yeah. all the other <laughs> venues have been booked out. 
<laughs> Imagine getting married in nice and sleazies. Right, should we wrap it up? Because we're getting on. I've got a staff quiz night tonight, so I'm going to be Ooh, jumping nice. on. Yeah. It's, is it sad that I'm actually looking forward to it? No, of course not. Cool. I, I, I did a Zoom quiz for my best friend's surprise birthday party on Zoom in February. <laughs> and all, all I remember is drinking pints, pints of port and lemonade. Oh no. no pints. That's, that's a throw up material, that. Yeah, I, I don't know that's how I a recipe it. for disaster. That's exactly yeah. what that port is. Port is lethal. And on that note, we would like to thank you, Chloe, for coming on thank Dermas Mondays and being part of this fantastic wee episode. It's thank you so much having for having me. Also, we need to say as well, if you did enjoy this, remember to like and subscribe. Like, share and, uh, and subscribe. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. You've been watching Dermist Mondays. Toodle pip. <laughs> Toodle pip. Toodle pip. Do your best Scottish accent. It'll be funny. Oh, yeah. no. No. <laughs> no. Toodle pip. That was quite good. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> a, wee bit, a wee bit Irish in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Bye! Bye! <laughs> ah.